Well, if I was sitting in something like a job interview and someone asked me what's my greatest weakness, it would probably have to be the fact that I just cannot leave well enough alone. I went over a decade without shooting my bow, so when I came back to archery, naturally I turned to YouTube to teach me a few things. These days I try to get out and shoot as much as possible, and I figure I might as well turn on my camera while I'm there. Maybe while I'm tinkering with stuff, someone else will pick up something that'll help them out. Now, this is my elite result. I've had this bow for about a year now, and I've kind of tinkered with it, but I haven't really done a deep dive on getting it really set up. Now, the thing that's really motivating me to do that is I did a side-by-side -side video a while back where I shot this bow. This is my Mission MXR. This is a budget hunting bow. It's only 30 inches. Doesn't have a whole lot of adjustability, but side by side, it outshoots this one. And on paper, this bow should be better. It's got a longer axle to axle. To axle. It's got more adjustability. It's got a better rest. It's got better sight. It's got better bars. It's got better everything. Yet, I can still shoot the cheap budget bow better than I can this. So, in an attempt to uh, figure out what's going on, I watched a video by Paige Pierce. She did a video called Everything I Do to Make My Bow Aim Better. So I went through that video and made the list of everything she talked about, and that's what we're gonna do. Now the thing is, I'm kind of congruently making a couple videos all at the same time. Right now, I'm also in the middle of a video where I, I've been at work, I haven't shot my bow much. I went and shot a Vegas round and scored it and I want to see how much I can improve after a week or two of just constantly daily shooting. And I figured, well, this would be a good time to dive into this and see if I can't improve how the bow holds and how the bow shoots while I'm doing this. All right, so here's a list of things that she talked about. Now, I can do most of these. There's a couple I can do. So things like the grip angle. I can't adjust grip angle on this bow, so we're not going to be able to do that one. Um, I don't have a bow press, so I can't really mess with cam timing. So we're going to pull that one off the list. Draw length, loop length, I can do that. Cable guard, I can kind of adjust it on this. It needs, ideally, if you had a bow press, we'll see if I can do anything with it or not. And then stabilizers, I don't have a nose button. I'm not currently planning on buying a nose button. But who knows, maybe once I get through this, I'll decide I want one. But for right now, we're going to scratch that off the list too. So we are going to start at the top. And she did mention as you go through this, you know, this is the order she goes in. But you might have to go back and redo a few because as you change some of this stuff, you might change your poundage and your holding weight. You might change your knock height a little bit, peep height. So it's kind of a back and forth and you just got to work through it. All right, we're not going to do anything super special here. We're just going to pull the bow up, hold it, see what it looks like, and then make some changes and see if they are better. So I played with the holding weight on this a little while ago, but I've changed the draw weight. Now, the reason I changed the draw weight is because I've decided these arrows are probably a little uh, weak for this bow. So to compensate for that, I've turned my bow down a little bit. Um, I've got this turned down actually all the way. So it's down to 50 pounds right now. So my holding weight's pretty low. So let's draw it, see how it feels. Then we'll change it and see if it's better. All right, these cams are super adjustable. You can adjust draw length and holding weight and let off all on a rotating mod. So draw length's about where I want it. So right here, this is how we're gonna adjust this. So you've got two parts. There is this piece on the bottom that is adjustable you can move, and that is the cable stop. I shot it with just the cable stops when I had it initially, and they're really spongy. It's not a very firm wall, and I was getting some really highs and lows from it. Um, so I threw the limb stops on there, and that kind of alleviated that problem. And that's what this piece here is. So we're gonna pull this off because this has this can be adjusted into five positions and I've played with that before. And going clear to the end and increasing the let off 
or sorry, decreasing the let off, increasing the holding weight basically takes it to almost what feels like no let off at all. So instead of moving that, we're gonna move the cable stop because you can move that in smaller increments than you can moving that thing. So we're gonna pull that off, slide that one and put that back on, do that on the other end and we will go give it a shot. All right, we've moved the holding or the let off one detent and we'll see if it feels better. It's aggressive, it wants to go. There's not a whole lot of value to that. Um, yeah, there's not much value at all. I do think it's making me hold steadier though. Now that might be just initially, um, after I go set it up and shoot 30 arrows and I'm having to fight it that hard all the time, I may not hold it steady, but I think we're gonna call that okay. Um, that did shorten my draw length ever so slightly though. I think we need to lengthen that back out just a smidge. So this one has to come completely out. That's the right there for safe keeping. And then this one, you just have to loosen. And we're gonna move it just one quarter of an inch because we can. And all that's gonna do is we're gonna line it up with the next hole, which puts it right about there. I'm going to drop this in this hole because that's the one that lines up. Make sure it's snug and snug this one down. And we'll do the same on the other side. All right, we got the draw stops moved on both sides. We lengthened it just a hair and that feels pretty good. I think we'll start with that. All right, on to the next step. All right, the next thing on our list is loop or knock height and loop height. So I'm just going to look and see where it's at now. I haven't really just that I've been playing with everything, so it might be off of here. But if I hold this level-ish, it's running pretty straight through. Bottom of the arrow is about halfway through the burger hole. It's level with the shelf. So that's pretty straight. Okay, so that, that's a good place to start. So what we're going to do is I'm going to cut this loop off. I'm going to tie another one on without knocking points so that way I can spin it and move it up and down the string until I can find a spot that I feel like it's holding better than it did. And we know that our start point was basically perfectly level. All right, something I want to do before I get too carried away is I want to find something I can measure off of. I think we're just going to go off the end of the limb, measure roughly where this is at. Let's say 18 and 11. So let's write that down somewhere. Oops, mark that down. So that way I at least know where it was in reference to where I put it back on and how it feels. So let's see if we can find a sharp blade. And we're going to very, 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 very carefully cut this off. Now, the other thing I'm worried about is when we get this off, I'm going to find out that my center serving split, and we're going to have to redo the center serving. But we'll cross that bridge here in just a moment. All right, here's what I'm talking about. See how that serving's come apart? Since I'm already this far, I might as well just uh, reserve that whole thing. 
All right, what we got set up here, I've just got a couple chunks of uh, arrow that I've cut. I've put knocks on either end, so that way I can kind of spread this apart and I can get in here and work. So we're going to cut this off, and then we'll figure out what size of serving I need to put back on there, and we'll come back and serve it up. All right, I'm not going to bore you to death with a video of me uh, serving the bowstring, but I put some marks on here. When I took it off, I measured them, and then I remarked it, so I know where I'm going to serve back. So we're going to get this done quick, and we'll be uh, back in business here in a minute. All right, I am just finishing up, so I'm going to put the final tugs on these. Let's tap that around, give it a good pull, make sure she's snug. Wrap it around this one, and give it a good tug. We've got ourselves brand new fresh serving so that looks nice so with this I'm not going to uh, I'm gonna make it tight enough it's obviously not gonna slip and come out but I'm not gonna crank it down to the point it's super tight either because this one's just reference eventually this one's gonna come off I'm not even gonna keep this one on here I'm gonna end up cutting it off tying in new loops soft knots all that stuff so this is just for reference. That's just enough. Get an arrow in there. I can get that on there. And we can go fold the name and adjust it a little bit as we go. All right. Let's hope this thing doesn't decide to uh, come loose and I punch myself in the face along the way. Make sure we're on the tar on the target for sure. First time pulling the loop always makes me nervous. Here we go. The peeps all sorts of twisted though. All right, I'm not gonna bore you guys with it, but I'm just gonna adjust this loop over and over and over until it feels better. All right, so here's what we ended up with. I was initially at 18 and 11 sixteenths. Now about 13 sixteenths, so only about an eighth lower than I was, but that seemed to hold better then I went up about 3 sixteenths and then started coming back down. And this felt really, really good. So we're going to go with this. I'm going to take, I'm going to see if I can't salvage it. If I can take part of this loop off, just tie my soft knots, and then tie this back onto it, I might be able to salvage it. All right, I got that loop loose. So I marked where I'm going to want this. It seems like everybody and their dog has their own way of doing soft knots. So I'm just gonna do some over and over and under knots and we'll call it sufficient. I'll probably do a couple there. There's one set. We're in there. Go check it, make sure it holds. All right, now that we got that all done, we move on to the knock, or sorry, the peep height. And uh, yeah, my peep's completely backwards now. After reserving it, it probably adjusted the twist in the string a little bit. So I'm gonna cut that out and flip it around and retie it. I'm probably gonna have to move it because I moved this down about an eighth, maybe three sixteenths. So that's definitely going to have to move. All right. We got the peep where we want it. So I'm going to put a little knot on here just so it stay while we were messing with it. Again, this is another one of those things. Everybody and their dog has their own way of doing it. So um, I did notice because I've changed this peep a couple times trying to get it to match. And tends to 
like if I just do the knots top and bottom, it tends to uh, tends to slide. So I'm doing a really exuberant wrap up and down the string method. All right, there she is. All tied in, looks pretty solid to me. Hopefully that didn't move while I was tying it in. So the next thing is tiller tuning. Never done it before. Let's see how that works out. Now, I've never done this before, and even Paige admitted in her video that some bows it has a really big effect, and she'll go as much as three turns different on each limb, which in this bow would max it out. And then she said on some bow that has no effect at all. So I don't know what to expect here. Let's start with the top. Let's do a half turn. Let's do another half a turn. Oh yeah, that's definitely going the wrong direction. That's not helping at all. All right, we're going to take that back out. So one turn back out. So let's add a turn to the bottom, or half a turn to the bottom. Let's add another half a twist here. I don't know, I uh, don't want to say it's really doing anything, turning the bottom up. No, I think it's all better even. Seems like any time I added twist, it unsteadied everything. So I think we're going to just leave those as even. I'm going to go... Uh, Lock down my side bolts, and we'll go with that from there. All right, we're zipping through this list. We've changed pounding, holding weight. We did a bunch of work for the uh, knock and loop height. Got our feet back where we wanted it. Tiller tuning didn't do us much. Draw length pretty much where we like it. It's feeling good to me. Next is the cable guard. Now, this one is adjustable, but... It's not micro adjustable, and I don't know how easily I'm going to be able to move that without a bow press. Because right now it's just all the way in, and I've left it there because I had clearance with my fletchings. It hasn't been an issue. So let's see if I can finagle that and push it over, and we'll see if it has any effect. All right, well, I was able to push that over more than I expected, so I pushed it as far out as I could. So let's set it up here and try it, and then I can work it back in if it's uh, not helping me. I'm going to say no real effect. It didn't, uh, didn't seem like it did a whole lot. All right, I now got it in kind of a mid position. No real effect. Well, looks like the last thing on this list is stabilizers. And you know what? It's like 1030 at night. I've been out here tinkering with this for a while now. I think we're just going to call it a night. And I'll work on stabilizers tomorrow or the next day. Um, this has been an interesting project to go through this list. When it comes to stabilizers, I kind of just set them up like this. Um, a while back, um, George Riles put out a video about taking all the weight off your bars and then slowly adding it back. And that's kind of how I came up with the weight that I have on here. But as for the position, this is kind of just where I put them on. Um, I put a 10 down just because that seems to be the thing to do. On the sidebar, I initially had this down and I remember watching a video, I think it might have been Paige Pierce video, that mentioned that by moving it up has the same effect as adding weight. And so I played with the back bar just a little bit, but not much. My plan is I'm going to take this 10 degree off, just screw it straight in, see how that feels. And then this Elite has a lower mount and an upper mount, so I'm going to move this up here and play with it up and down and just see what it does. And maybe I'll find something that fits better. And once I've played with that a little bit, then we'll shoot it through paper and try to get it going again. 
because I need to shoot another Vegas round with this and make sure I score better than I did the other day. Anyways, I'll see you guys in just a minute. It'll probably be tomorrow for me. Well, I'm back. It's been a couple days since I uh, started on this list. Got all the way through it except for stabilizers, and you know, the bow's doing pretty good. I've been shooting it a little bit. I knew everything was kind of off, so I did a quick paper toot on it. You know, I shot a few. It obviously was tearing pretty big because I moved my loop down quite a bit. Bullet hole at about six or seven yards. I then stepped outside, shot it on a target with my bear shaft. They're not hitting perfect, but I'm not worried about perfect yet. I just wanted to get them kind of shooting close. I've had to bottom my rest out all the way though. So I moved my loop down. And so my ham ski is, here's the marks. Oh, they're over here. It's pretty much bottomed out. So that might cause a problem, but I'm gonna roll with it for now. And if we gotta make a small adjustment later, I will. But I'm just gonna step outside and do some shooting. So here's the setup for the evening in the dark, under the porch lights, late results set up, got the uh, matrix down there, put my Vegas face back on it. I'm not really worried about scoring it, I just want to see how it's actually holding on a target because when I was standing in the garage messing with everything, I got it to hold what was felt good. But now I actually want to put it on a target at 20 yards and see how it really feels. So. Gonna get this set up and we'll shoot a few rounds. All right, it's roughly sighted back in at 20. And we're just gonna put a few on target, see how it feels. Well, I'm gonna say that's <laughs> doing a lot better. Normally when I put my pin out there, you know, it's bouncing quite a bit, way out of the gold on a Vegas face, usually red to red is my pin float. And this is just sitting in the gold now. Now that just might be because I'm not tired yet. Let's shoot a few and see how that goes. All right, well, I've shot a few rounds, five or six. The pin is feeling great. It's coming in here. For the most part, it's staying in the yellow. I'm executing really good shots. Feels good. Arrows are kind of hitting all over the place. Part of that, I think, is because the left and right tune, I think, is fine. But the up and down is a little off. And let me show you what I'm looking at here. So, bear shaft. You can see it's definitely hitting tail low. Which means, I believe, point high, tail low. You need to lower the point. Problem is I've bottomed the rest out. And I've already got my D-loop and stuff tight on there. So I either need to cut my D-loop and slide it up a little bit, or, or, or option two here is maybe a little tiller tuning. So I need essentially the D-loop to move up. So if I add tension to the top limb, it should pull everything up just a little bit. So I'm going to add half a turn to the top limb and just see what it does. So let's shoot these two and see how it lands now. All right, that's a little more dramatic than I was expecting. Half a turn took it from being tail low to a little bit tail high. I'm going to go pull just a little bit out, like a quarter, and see what it looks like. All right, so I put half a twist or half a turn into my top bolts. We're going to do quarter turn out. See what effect that has. All right. Well, it's a little more parallel. That's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for perfect. I'm not necessarily trying to make them touch. I just want that shaft to land parallel up and down that direction. 
I want it to land parallel this direction, which is pretty much there, left and right. So I think I'm going to call that sufficient for now. I'm not trying to super tune right now, just trying to get it close so that as I shoot, things are at least grouping consistently. I think I'm going to mess with my bars a little bit. So I think we're going to start with the back bar tonight. Uh, the Elite has two mounting holes for the back bar. I've currently got it mounted to the bottom hole, so I'm going to play with it. It's currently up, so I'm going to play with it straight out, down, see if there's a difference there. And then I'm going to move it to the upper hole and see how it feels there. So I'm not going to bore you guys with all that video. I'm just going to go do it, and I'll come back with some results. All right, here's where I ended up. So this was mounted down, and I had it slightly tilted up. And I played with it up, almost ridiculously up and ridiculously low. Saw the ver slight variation, so I moved it to the upper hole. Same thing, I put it really far down, and I put it so high it was almost hitting my arm. And honestly, it feels better there. Um, the differences are very minute. And I've, I've shot a little bit tonight. You know, I'm probably 30 arrows in, so I'm not perfectly fresh. I've got just a little fatigue sitting in, um, especially with all the holding weight I have now. Like, it's, it's some work. I can feel it in my back, losing that much weight every shot. Um, but I think I'm going to leave that there. So let's take this 10 degree off and see what happens when I put the bar straight out the front. All right, so I got my long bar just screwed straight in, so it's straight versus having the 10 degree down on it. Let's see how she feels. Yeah, I don't think there's any difference there for me, 10 degrees down versus just bar straight in. Well, I think I'm going to wrap up with it tonight. Um, I put the 10 degree back on just because it's a quick disconnect versus having it just screwed straight in. Like I said, didn't really feel a difference between the two, so we'll just go with that. As for the list, poundage and draw and holding weight definitely adjusted that. Poundage I turned all the way down mostly because of the span of the arrows bumped holding weight up as much as I could and still felt like I had a little bit of a let off. It's not much. I'm going to have to toughen up if I'm going to shoot this bow like this. Uh, for 30 arrows, I'm going to have to work for it. If I try to shoot a five spot where I'm shooting 60 arrows, I'm going to be, I'm going to be hurting. Loop height definitely changed that. That's probably the biggest change we made. And honestly, of everything we did on this list, that was probably the most effective on what my hold looked like was moving that around. Peep height, adjusted it to match what I needed. Tiller tuning, there's a quarter turn. That was mostly for bear shaft tuning, not necessarily for hold. Draw length and loop length, that changed a little bit when we changed the holding weight and put it kind of where it was. It, I felt it was a tad long before, so by adjusting this down, it length, or shortened this just a little bit. Moved the cable guard, didn't see anything with that. Played with stabilizers a little bit. So of everything on here, I think the two things that helped the most, one was my holding weight. Turning holding weight up definitely improved my hold. The other thing was, was changing my loop height. I am, I am blown away by how much that changed my hold. So the crazy part to me is how moving my loop length down an eighth or like three sixteenths dramatically changed how the bow held. That I, I probably think that is the number one biggest difference. And honestly, that's the one I was going to skip because it seemed like a lot of work, especially the way Paige Pierce describes how to do it is by tying this on and then just spinning it so it works its way up and down the serving and the fact that I ended up having to reserve the whole thing. So that was probably the most labor intensive of the changes, but it was also the most dramatic. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm blown away by how much of a difference that made. So I'm going to step out. I'm going to spend some more time shooting this. And maybe I'll come back and revisit this list again in like a week or so and just see if I can't tweak these things a little bit. But for just first time going through this and doing it, um, big difference. So I'm hoping scores on paper show the difference because I'm holding better. I'm hoping that means I'm going to shoot better. We'll find out. Thanks for coming along. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. I'm, uh, I'm trying to give this YouTube thing a real try. I'm not trying to get famous. I'm not trying to prove to anybody that I'm smarter than them. 
I'm just walking you through. I'm just a guy in my backyard shooting. The things I'm learning, I'm trying to apply them. Figured I'll bring you along. Hopefully, one of you guys can learn something from me. But anyways, I've got some other videos here that I'm going to be posting shortly, so make sure you go watch those, and we'll catch you on the next one.